3A3 Hydraulics Lab Session 1 Open Channel Flow In hydraulics, the term open channel flow refers to the movement of a fluid in a conduit with a free surface open to the atmosphere. This is the opposite of pipe flow, in which the fluid is fully enclosed by the carrying conduit. As such, open channel flow is driven by gravity and not pressure differentials. Real life examples are numerous and encompass both naturally occurring and engineered fluid conduits. Rivers, streams, culverts, sewers, and canals all illustrate open channel flow. This video will demonstrate two experiments using the flow channel within the departmental hydraulics lab. The objectives are Part 1 to determine Manning's friction coefficient n for the flow channel and Part 2 to develop and hence verify an Excel model to compute the backwater curve for a weir placed in the flow channel. Part 1 Manning's friction coefficient In 1890 Robert Manning, an Irish engineer, developed an empirical formula to estimate the average velocity of a fluid flowing in an open channel. This equation relates the flow rate in the channel to the cross-sectional area, hydraulic radius, slope and Manning's friction coefficient, n. In this experiment, we will rearrange the Manning equation in order to determine the n coefficient. To start the experiment, a reasonable flow is initiated in the channel. A storage tank is first filled. Water from here is then pumped to a reservoir from which it flows into the open channel. The flow is allowed to continue undisturbed for several minutes so that steady state conditions are achieved. The geometric properties of the channel and flowing fluid are then measured. The required dimensions are length of channel, width of channel, depth of flow, which is measured using a depth gauge, and the height difference of the water surface between the starting point, H1, and ending point, H2 of the channel. These dimensions can then be used to calculate the cross-sectional area, wetted perimeter, slope of the channel and hydraulic radius as follows. Please use the demonstrative values on screen for your report. We must now determine the flow rate Q within the channel. This will be performed using three different methods with n coefficients being calculated for each technique. Method A using a bucket and stopwatch. A bucket is used to collect all the discharge from the channel over a known period of time. The volume of water collected in the bucket, divided by the time taken to collect said water, will give an approximation of the flow rate. A weighing scale is used to determine the mass and hence volume of water collected in the given time frame. Method B Electromagnetic flow meter. A flow meter attached to the flow channel inlet pipe directly displays the current discharge rate in litres per minute. Method C Venturi meter. A Venturi meter located on the inlet pipe can be used in conjunction with Bernoulli's principle to determine the flow rate based on the pressure differential across the device. The pressure differential is visible here as the difference in head before and after the narrowing of the pipe. Using the following equation, we may determine the flow rate based on the Venturi meter readings. Using the geometrical properties of the channel and water flow, as well as your calculated flow rates, the end value of the flow channel may now be determined using the rearranged Manning equation. Please compare the various flow values and comment on any possible discrepancies between them. Which methods of flow measurement 
or most or least precise? Did the various flow values have appreciable impact on the calculated values of n? Part 2. Analyzing the backwater curve. In open channel flow, the backwater curve refers to areas of the longitudinal profile of the channel in which the depth of flow is higher than normal due to the downstream presence of an obstruction or constriction in the channel. Examples of such obstructions may include a weir, bridge, or dam. Physical changes in the channel geometry, such as narrowing of the width or increase in surface roughness, may also result in the formation of backwater effects. The analysis of backwater effects is important for civil engineers. It allows for the projection of the impact that construction or maintenance works would have upstream in a channel. Backwater effects may extend far upstream, thus potentially causing flooding in areas a significant distance from the obstruction or constriction. In this experiment, a weir will be introduced into the channel and the backwater effects caused by this analysed. The dimensions of the weir are as follows. To start, a flow of water is initiated in the open channel and allowed to stabilise as before. Again, the normal depth of flow is measured using a depth gauge. The weir is then placed into the channel. The introduction of the weir into the channel results in the formation of a backwater curve upstream of the obstruction. As can be seen, the depth of flow increases significantly, but the velocity of flow decreases. We will now measure the experimental profile of the backwater curve. To do so, the depth of flow at a number of points upstream of the weir are measured using a depth gauge. The horizontal distance from the apex of the weir to the point of depth measurement is also recorded in each case. Plotting the linear distance from the apex of the weir against the depth of flow will produce an experimental backwater curve. A sample dataset for this experiment has been uploaded to the link displayed on screen and also included in the description box below. The experimentally measured backwater curve can then be compared to the theoretical profile as given by the following three equations. Please create an Excel spreadsheet with these formulae to iteratively calculate the theoretical backwater curve. Please comment on the correlation of the two backwater curves. Was there any discrepancy between the predicted and observed curves? If so, please suggest any reasons for this. Thank you for watching. Instructions regarding the submission of your report for this lab will be provided in the coming days. Best of luck to everyone in completing your report.